All right, so it's time for another PSP tutorial, and this time it's the um, PSP Type B 64 bit driver and uh, Remote UI Lite. And um, I'm going to, in some way, share a link either to the files or to, um, to a shared file that I myself have uploaded because they can be hard to get, and I'm not sure if you can actually find this install here anymore. And uh, I also want to say that it's up to you if you want to install this and uh, I am not sure if it can actually cause any trouble in any way so I, I take no responsibility for what you do with your computer this however will show how to install the PSP type B driver 64 bit in Windows 10 and using remote joy light and there is a few things so here you can see my PSP I'm sorry about the quality and stuff but uh, you need custom firmware, uh, that's the first thing that you need, and uh, I'm using Prometheus 4 5.5, and um, yeah, it's been working great for me, so I don't see any reason to mess around with that, but there probably are better custom firmwares out there now, um, but yeah, that's the one I'm using. Also, um, I currently have it set up so that I will get static noise, because I wanted to take up noise a bit that is something that a lot of people have problems with and I've also had a lot of problems with that. I'm gonna see if I can fix the camera a little bit here. Oh well. Ah yeah, it's a little bit better. It's a really... <laughs> it's a sucky webcam. I can't do anything about it right now. Uh, but yeah, I got no... as you can see, no sound when I move them in the menu here and uh, it's set up with a third party this is a decent quality USB cable that I bought for my PS3 controller it's a little bit worn here though but um, also this is um, probably a medium quality it's like it's a gold plated um, audio cable and uh, before I upgraded to this, I had a pretty sucky one and that caused a lot of static noise actually, so the quality of the audio cable does a lot. And uh, then I'm using the standard power plug and I recommend that you connect this to a different power plug than your computer if you're going to record. Uh, because, uh, and I, I don't mean <laughs> that you connect them to the same plug because that's obviously impossible, but if you're using a splitter then you are in a way connecting them to the same jack in uh, the same wall jack and that can cause a type of a loop between the devices that you connect together after that and uh, that can cause horrible horrible noise i have had it happen i don't know uh, i don't uh, know how it works and stuff like that i just read up on it and uh, that was one of my uh, my issues but uh, in 90%, at least in my experience, it's something to do with the wires. So um, I've done a scenario here that I'm gonna show how to minimize the noise if you can't really get 100% read of it. So let's start with that because that is one thing that is going to be a pain in the ass if you do all this and uh, then you have like the worst noise ever. So I'm gonna go down here to um, this speaker in the bottom right corner and take recording devices. And I know that my PSP is connected to the front port and for me it's this one. So it, for me, you it might be this one or yeah you might have more. But this is the front port of, of my case. And uh, I'm gonna right click that and take properties. And I can go to the tab listen and take listen to this device and click apply. And now we are going to get some static noise. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, sorry about that. We will try to minimize this. And this is kind of a pretty bad scenario here. I'm just gonna check the PSP there real fast. I'm gonna leave this open. I got the program on mine because my... I'm not sure if you say sound card anymore, but my um, my motherboard has an inbuilt Realtek card and uh, I'm gonna use that software. You can do this with 
basically anything that you got, but I'm just gonna lower the recording volume a lot here until it's an, at an acceptable level and this is worst case scenario I've done the worst I can actually so it seems like 17 is an acceptable noise level something that won't actually uh, show up when you play games but now you will notice if I click here the sound on the PSP will be super low so instead I'm going to to raise the volume. Not sure if you can see that, but I'm raising the volume up here to um, to max, and now I got a decent audio level with a lot less noise than it was before. And in my case, and this time it's actually actually literally the case itself. The thing is that you might not think about that, I didn't really think about it first, is that um, the jacks on the front of the case is connected to the motherboard, of course you have to do that, but the cables going between the motherboard and the case itself, they are really really low quality in my case, um, and that causes, that picks up a lot of noise, so what I did, I've already done this, and how I solved it was actually connecting to the motherboard directly. Nothing in between, just plugging the cables into the motherboard at the back of the computer and using good cables. And I, I think I can, I can show this here. Not sure if it will be the same because uh, it's kind of... I'm gonna leave it like here. It's kind of strange how this actually works, but uh, last time... The USB cable, the, I think it became a loop between the audio and the USB for some reason, but we're gonna see if, if that is the case this time. Yeah, you can see the noise is gone now. Now it's back. And uh, now it's gone. And now it's back. And uh, yeah, you can see it becomes sort of a loop. If, if you're not going to record, then this is fine. You're gonna have a really great noise. But if you're going to record and play it up on the... If you want to play up the display from the PSP on the PC, then, then this is going to start to become a problem. And this is a, a worst case scenario. So I'm gonna lower this down again. To like really low. And uh, yeah, if you can't get rid of the noise, it probably is... It probably is your cables in in some form it usually is a cable picking up uh, picking up something that causes the static noise but uh, in this case it's the cables between the motherboard and the porch on the front and uh, yeah it it really doesn't work out and also don't connect this to the same power jack that can also be a, a reason and also the quality of the cables do matter this is just the standard uh, power plug that came with the PSP. So that's the noise part. I think I talked uh, a bit about that now. I'm gonna go here and uh, take properties, go to listen and turn this off because this was just a test to see if we had noise. Uh, what the listen does is it actually listens to that port constantly. Anything that you play up comes uh, it will come up on your PC yeah if you have like an mp3 player or something connected it will play everything that comes out of the in this case the headphone jack on the, the device itself but um, we are not gonna do that we're going to let the remote your light handle the, the sound actually and oh yeah one more thing there that is very important let's go back to recording devices and uh, this need to be the default the default device uh, to to use if you're because otherwise remote your light won't pick it up so the the port that you're using need to be the default port anyway let's uh, go to the next step so i have a bundle here uh, not this one though but uh, <clears throat> the psp type b 64-bit driver is the one that is a pain in the ass to install there is there are drivers that come with remote your light However, the 64-bit is a pain in the ass to install, while the 32-bit... I don't use 32-bit, but I haven't seen people having a lot of problems with it. You might, if, you, if you're using 32-bit, you might get away with just this driver here. 
I am going to use another bundle that I'm not sure anymore where it comes from. I've had it for a really, really long time. Um, maybe it's in the EULA. PSP driver package disclaimer. This uh, driver package was compiled by Cyberskunk Systems using Microsoft DP Inst. Uh, yeah, so Cyberskunk System has done this bundle. And I can't say for a hundred percent hundred percent that there isn't some form or spy of spyware or anything in this, but that's just a risk. If you want to follow this tutorial, you will have to take that. I have personally had no problems whatsoever with it, but I'm not gonna say that there isn't. Because maybe there is something. I'm not sure. I got it off the web, and uh, yeah, that's how it is. Uh, you will just Either not do this or take the risk, but uh, deep inst is the, um, the installation. I'm going to share this file here in some form. If I can find the file from the original site, then I will share that. Or if I can't, I will probably just upload the file to some file sharing site. Anyway, deep inst. Oh wow. Yeah, we got, sorry about that. We got pretty high volume from the desktop and uh, I wanted it to be proper so that's why I didn't lower it because of the static noise and stuff so yeah let, let's go with that here uh, hmm. I'm not sure if we have to do this first or later so I think that we should do this later let's do that as the second usually I already got my PSP set up and uh, that's yeah, I'm just gonna show how to do it because I don't really want to mess around with the PSP, but I have had a few people wanting to know how to do it. So first, let's let's go here. Let's go here. Sorry about this. Um, let's go here down to um, SE plugins. You can see SE plugins. That should be a file among the, the Remote Your Light files. If you download Remote Your Light from anywhere on the web, you will probably have the SE plugins folder and there is a remote joylight.prx and then there is the game.txt, game150.txt, pops.txt and vsh.txt and I'm sorry if you can hear the washer in the background, uh, cloth washer. I'm not sure if that picks up but uh, yeah sorry about that. In these files anyway there is a small little text here and this will need to be on your PSP. And the easiest way when having custom firmware is just, uh, let's, let's see here, I think I turned it off too fast now, I'm gonna have to stop, there we go. Holding down the power button, or up in this case, hard shuts it, shuts it down, I'm not sure what it's called, hard boot it. Anyway, when booting it up again, hold down this Wow, it's really overexposed. Uh, hold down the top left button and then start the PSP. And you will basically see nothing of what's going on right now. I've tried, I tried the last time to actually show. But I'm go just going to have to say because this camera, it can't, it can't get focus. So um, just click on toggle USB. And that will bring up our PSP here, and as you can see in the root of the PSP... Uh, sorry about <laughs> In the root of the PSP, I have a SC plugins folder. If you don't have this, uh, this folder, no worries, just, uh, just move the contents from um, Remote Your Light. This folder, the entire, just copy the entire folder into the root of the PSP. But if you do have them like I have, the, because you can see I have some other stuff going on here and I don't want to mess around with that because there was like years since I set this up and I don't want to, to break it. Um, but if we go into game, this is an example, it's the same for all of the text files. Here you can see I have different ones and I think that uh, this is just on and off, pretty sure. I'm not, I'm not sure that it is but I think that's it, how it works. You just have to go to the your PSP type, um, your remote, your light folder, go to AC plugins and take, uh, yeah, game.txt in this case, take this line here, copy into the other file, paste it, 
at the bottom. But I already got it here at the top, so that's um, that's not going to do any difference for me. But that's how you do it. If you don't have them, just copy them over. And don't forget this file. You can see that file uh, here. Here. <laughs> I have a few copies because I've tried different versions, but it's just this one. Uh, so uh, that's um, that's that part. That's actually copying them onto the PSP itself, which you will have to do if you want to run Remote Your Light because that's how it actually connects. Then there is another thing. I'm going to uh, disconnect it here soon, but uh, yeah, you can't really see this anyway. But there is one more thing in plugins. You need to make sure that they are actually activated. So you will have to check so that uh, remote your light at all places that uh, there is a remote your light.prx, it's enabled. So VSH enabled, game enabled, and uh, pop pops enabled. And that's about it. I'm going to restart this here and go back into the the installation here on the computer. So we got the, the bundle from, um, what was it again? Cyberskunk, okay, we got the bundle here and I'm going to double click on DP, DP inst and that probably gave you a black screen because it asks for administrator rights and uh, this is a problematic part. This is somewhere where a lot of people fail and don't understand why. So I'm going to go through and go through that part here. When I take next here and accept, you will see that I got ready to use. That's because I already installed it. But uh, first, you need to activate. You need to enable unsigned drivers. I'm not sure what it's called, uh, but you can get to those options by. Um, Restarting your computer down in the start menu while holding the shift button down and then take troubleshoot. I think then it's start up and then you will be able to get uh, disabled enforcement of digitally signed drivers. I think that's it how you do it. Uh, but uh, do check a tutorial on how to actually disable unsigned drivers in Windows 10. It's the same for Windows 8. I think it worked a lot better in Windows 7, but uh, you will have to do that before actually being able to install the driver. So I've already installed it. When you've done that, it's just to click finish and you're done, basically. It should work now. If we go to, let's see here. If we go to GUI in the Remote Your Light folder, so let's start over. Remote your light here. Give it, and then we can start remote your light. And you can see I got my I got my PSP here now. And I also got sound because I already activated that. But if you right click here on the screen, then you can go to capture and enable WAV. And that will take the default microphone. Now I disable it so I won't have any any sound. But uh, and now I enable it. And you can hear the, the kind of static noise there in the background. It's very weak now though, but uh, this might break the speakers. Nope. Yeah, there you can you can hear that. Uh, it's kind of it will go over the, the static noise, no problem. And the static noise that I have right now is pretty bad actually. That's basically a worst case scenario. It's one of the worst I've been in. But uh, now I can record this with um, a few different options. I used Fraps personally a lot and I liked Fraps. However, I had to kind of upscale it in After Effects afterwards uh, because it just turned so small. So even if I just uploaded it, I think I uploaded it to, to YouTube, but it didn't really. It just became a small little screen. I'm not going to say 100%. I just know that I had some problems with that. Because it's really low resolution, and uh, I've also done uh, shadow play and recording desktop like this, having it in in full screen. And I think that you can actually get this in full screen. I don't remember how to do that though, but um, it says space for screen here. I think that's the screen button on the PSP, and not actually. Uh, yeah. 
I don't remember. Maybe you can't. I should probably have checked that up before, but uh, you can also turn off the PSP screen while using the uh, the remote your light and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I've used Shadow Play, and that I didn't like that because when I used Fraps, I didn't use the um, the microphone um, from the PSP here. I didn't capture the sound from uh, remote your light instead i had it uh, on off and recorded the the microphone individually but um, i think you got options for that now in shadow play i'm not sure it was easier in fraps you can also just push uh, the f12 button here and you will record a wav file and a mp4 file i believe uh, through remote you light itself like so and that should come up in the capture directory and you can't change this directory but uh, uh, let's go with we'll see here you go this is what i just recorded and i think it looks very well i think it has um yeah this very good quality and you will have to kind of put this together you can do it in a lot of different uh, yeah programs like windows movie maker is a free one that you can do this in and uh, also you can do it in uh, after effects you can do it in sony vegas or you can do it in premiere or whatever program you want to use i guess the easiest for a normal person who doesn't do editing is just going with movie maker and saving it for an hd monitor but uh Right now I'm using OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, and I've come to like this a lot. In OBS I can actually do some uh, some settings here. I'm gonna do that live here. Let's let's add a uh, a window capture. There we go. Now it is capturing my it's capturing this this here that comes up on the screen in the right now it's in the left corner but i should be able to move it around and stuff not sure if i can do that while actually recording but uh, i'm trying to change the size of it <laughs> okay it, it don't want to change the size uh let's see here now 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 i got it uh, <laughs> i had two mices for a while there that was what confused me so we can kind of we can do like this and record just this window and it will be just as fine as any of the other ones uh, but i'm gonna remove that again so you can use basically anything uh, not not that way you, you can use basically anything that you want to do uh recording with what you normally record with to record this and i guess that's about it if you do ha have any problems I can't guarantee that I can help you because there are a lot of things that can uh, be wrong. The computer can just, uh, yeah, it can crash in combination with remote you light and the version of remote you light can be, um, yeah, you might have to change to, I think there is 2.0 as well, not sure, but you might have to switch version of remote you light. It can be the PSP itself that's causing problems and it can be cables, it can be the computer, it can be basically anything. And you might have to do a lot of troubleshooting to get this to work and especially the driver. The driver can be a pain in the ass. I hope I explained that properly. Uh, but I will try to help you if you leave a comment. If I can, I, I will. Otherwise, maybe someone else will and you can leave a comment in the in the below this video. Okay, so what I've done is that I have uh, plugged in the PSP on the back of my PC instead where the ports go directly into the motherboard. And uh, yeah, where there are no cables in that can screw it up basically. Because on the front of the case, it doesn't really matter what uh, how good cables I have. Because the cables between the porch and the motherboard are so bad. But listen to this. And let's open up the settings again. You probably remember how I had it. So, uh, real, real tech HD manager here. 
And uh, by the way, I have it to line in instead. So, and it's a, there is no noise. You might hear a computer in the background, but there is no, maybe, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of, uh, of noise. So that's the difference. Instead of the horrible, horrible noise that I had before, I now basically have no noise at all by just plugging it in on the back of my PC and using, uh, yeah, good cables. So I definitely recommend that and uh, I hope that this video helped. And uh, thank you for watching. If you do like the video, leave a like and a comment and also consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.